Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm going to uh, show you today how to continue with the previous uh, uh, two tutorials that I made that uh, can make automatic uh, grid system and uh, how we can add dimension to it. And as I promised in the earlier videos that I'm going to show you how to place automatic grids uh, sorry, automatic columns do it, and um, as you can see here in uh, inside uh, Dynamo, that's uh, it's already been generated as uh, uh, proxies lines that represent the each column and its location based on uh, Dynamo just finding the intersection of the grids, and as you can see here in uh, and uh, Rabbit, uh, it's already been done in place automatically, without the need to, uh, without the need actually to, uh, you know, do that manually. So let's have a look and how that can be done. So I'm gonna close this uh, end up file, and then um, just simply start up a metric, a metric one. So just go to new and browse metric. Yeah, that's my default metric. It's just the default temp template file and of course you have to go to units and change the millimeters to meters as we agreed before so that's my my uh, startup file I'm gonna close that guy and uh, just uh, load up the last video that I the last file that I just made this one uh, it's a distance with a dimension. So we're going to drag that to Dynamo and uh, just wait for it. Yep, that's the last thing we end up with. So I'm going to save it. And after the dimension, I'm going to add columns. So just to continue what we've started before. And in it, if you remember, uh, it's just running that. We should not take that long, as you will. It's gonna run that. Try to find out the previous setting that we have to create grids and dimensions uh, automatically based on the amount of rows and columns and distance between the between the grid. Come on. My old machine scaring me out by saying not responding and it's totally responding but anyway good so as you can see uh, that's been done this yellow thing again just uh, gonna change the level and then get it back and get my dimension here as you can see with the grid automatically being created that's been said and that's been done earlier. Now, what we need is to let Revit, uh, sorry, Dynamo specify for us the intersection for those parametric grid. And as you as you remember, this is a parametric, so we might have three, we might have thirty in each dimension. So that have to be a fully automated process. So we need to get the uh, intersection point of all those grids and of course place the columns on those uh, you know on those intersections so what we need to do is again to, to use the reverse method so I'm gonna go and uh, you know ask for a column and this is our guy here a column by curve and it's part of the structural framing so again, again, it's just a reverse techni technique. So I'm gonna start up from the end node in instead of you know the step by step from the last thing, because that's working perfectly. And we need to create a column by curve. So I'll end up by I'll, actually I start up from the end, which is this one. And look what it's need. I'm gonna create a structural framing, and it's need a curve level and a column. It's actually a structural column. So let's go with the easier one. So it's need a structural column. So again. Uh, it's actually here. I don't need even to Google it or uh, search it again. Structural column types. So uh, again, it's just one type has been loaded, which is really I hate, you know. So I'm gonna go to uh, that structural column, and in it, 
you can just simply load again uh, I already picked that and it's a metric system it is not this one if you see just column those guys are just the architectural guys architectural columns uh, I'm gonna go to structural columns here in concrete and then you know just a round one or rectangular one whatever you want now it's been loaded it's, it I just just can't place it here but I don't want I'm just gonna hit escape so I'm just guaranteeing that it's already been loaded as a family as a family sorry inside the system or inside this file now if I drop that down you see that I see those new types for my new round uh, column then I pick a 600 mil beautiful now just connect that guy here now we need levels so just again self explain to level and whatever you have here as levels you're gonna see in Dynamo so you can change that that might be changed different uh, from my machine from what you can see on your one because you know it's I, it might use the different templates you might get different names in a way so connect those guys now we need a curve so it's just a line just goes from the intersection point and then goes vertically up so this guy a curve again it's just a line don't believe it just line I don't know why they call it curve anyway just connect those guys and of course it needs a start point and end point so that's where we have to go back to this you know big maze that we have uh, it's really good to group them and I'm going too lazy just just here I don't know for dimensions anyway so we need a start point and we need an end point so the start point of course is the or actually are uh, the intersection geometry of those X and Y grids beautiful so as I said intersections just write intersect and it's basically a geometry intersection so you have or actually you need rivet to sorry dynamo to find out the geometrical intersection so geometry dot yeah this one so it should be geometry intersection beautiful which need geometry in the other thing so where is it so just open that guy those are the lines so we, we just hide if you remember I'm just gonna connect those here if you forgot I'm gonna just you know get the preview back so I'm talking about those guys of course with those guys again which is the vertical one so just take another line and connect that guy with this guy so this is the intersection so just around that you should see a point C here all over the place but you know the scary business is they are going you know diagonal and that means we have something wrong with uh, with the lacing issue the, the problem the annoying problem it goes shortest just make it cross product and then run again and you're gonna find your lovely grid of uh, an intersection thing here so again back to this just poor guys we always hide them so I'm gonna hide them again so I can see my points and focus on them easily plus I don't need to see them in the viewport here so just the points that's what I want so those points are just the startup points so you can go ahead and you know be happy guy and connect them like this no worries now we need you know the line and the line goes to the curve now we to the end point so nothing help us better than the translate geometry of course so it's uh, of course XY system so uh, which one translate geometry in three direction no uh, should we XY yeah this one so yeah that geometry translate so we need the geometry which is the entire grid of guys those points you remember and uh, we need XYZ uh, oh, it would be a good idea to flatten them probably 
to get a better shape and then get this guy here and then get this guy here and let's see what I am doing yep that's a better shape getting rid of this nesting list so now we have this guy which is the geometry and it's copied now we need to push it in the Z by the amount of height of that column so we either go a slider and we go the numerical one and that's a numerical thing here you can just call it column height and by that you're defining the unconnected uh, height system because a 5 as a default value you can mess things up as much as you want in here it's up to you to define how much you want anyway I'm gonna connect that to Z so getting this back here and run this machine it should create a lines vertically standing up you know like a five meter at each point you know between the translated in the origin as you can see and immediately that will make this node fully satisfied and have all its inputs generating our lovely columns here in, in 3d and you know voila you know like that's done just changing the shading add some lights to it and you can see some shadow to it sorry and those your you know columns has been placed automatically and happily on each point and you can just go ahead and change the X and Y and you can see that uh, interact uh, as good as it goes and now if you are a happy guy who really hates the uh, unconnected system because you might say that no I want those guys to following you know level 1 and level 2 so you have level 1 you have level 2 you remember here so you need those guys not to be unconnected but you want them to follow level 1 and level 2 relationship I know now we start uh, nitpicking but uh, it's okay so you can just go ahead and you know just select those guys and just give them a block uh, it's good to group things in, in Dynamo anyway so if you're not happy with this you know unconnected system we really need to define a new one so we need levels relationship so that's my level one that's my level two all right so that's level one that's level two now we need as you can see this guy is just uh, having a level which is uh, you know it's just the name which is level one and its elevation which is technically zero if you run that guy again you're gonna get this is getting defined to get the information which is uh, level uh, it's again level 2 with the value of the level the elevation of that level is 4 lovely so what you can do is just to extract that so I'm gonna go level dot illy and that can give you the levels out of each sorry the elevation out of each level which is really nice because you know like it's you're gonna get connecting this guy and this guy running this thing and you're gonna get this tell you that's uh, it's a double so it's just a numerical value that represent this zero while this dude give you four for the elevation that's nice so what you need is just a couple of a minus b and to define a new code block based on a and b just be careful to place the big one and then the small one otherwise you're gonna get negative thing and we don't want negative thing because the column will be going down so that's full which is technically the difference between this guy and this guy so this is a parametric height that force those guys the columns to be constrained by the lower level and the high level so we need to substitute this in the translate height getting rid of this poor guy that is you know yet now render obsolete that's useless just push this in here and sound more organized now let's test this and hit run those guys should goes down don't believe your 3d always goes to elevation see now if you flex and make this four or five those guys should you know be following and constraining and that's really what is actually you know should be so by that we get our you know lovely grids 
uh, working perfectly and lovely dimension should be also placed perfectly and the grid is parametrically placed uh, so by that you get uh, your entire uh, grid system with the dimension with the columns been placed properly I'll try to uh, figure it out how to make the uh, you know not just the column but even the, the beams above uh, placed uh, parametrically which is step by step we are making uh, a fully parametric uh, building rather than with the, with all its structural system grid dimension columns beams and even going further to show you even how to place an automatic slab uh, which is really beautiful and can shut you know like uh, reduce the amount of work if you have a typical building like this one uh, and produce it in a significant, uh, you know, really, really uh, faster and in a, in a, in a more elaborate way, and you can change it and you know, make it a parametric building rather than just do that uh, boring, elaborated, you know, like very boring, you know, steps that might consume significant amount of time out of you. I wish that you find this uh, video uh, useful. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good day. Bye bye.